You know, a lot of time we get hype in service. That's right. And hype is not the spirit of God, it's the excitement of the flesh. That's right. And you better not allow your excitement move you into hypocriting. Amen. Are you getting me? That's right. Keep it just like God's word. Let all things be done decently. Do you hear this? First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40. Let all things be done decently. How much? All things. This is our GPS system. That's right. Let all things be done decently. Decently. And in order. And in order. Keep it in the right Bible perspective. That's right. When you get out of Bible perspective, I don't care how it looks or it seems right. When it's out of Bible perspective, it's a mess. That's right. And insulting to God. That's right. Do you not know, worship? is sacrifice. Amen. And it smells two ways. Either it's a sweet-smelling Savior or it stinks in God's nostrils. That's right. We want to keep it sweet. sweet. When we keep it sweet, it's acceptable. That's right. There's excitement and there's the moving of the Spirit of God. It's not the same. No, it's not. I can get excite, excited at a ball game. I don't need the Holy Ghost to get excited at a ball game. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. A man get excited when he see a woman. He ain't in the spirit like Joshua said. <laughs> no. Joshua, no, I ain't going to leave him alone either. <laughs> In other words, stay away from formality. That's what I want to work on. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. When you have a form of godliness, you feel like doing something, saying something. And because you give in to your feeling, you're not considering what you're doing out of order, out of place, wrong time. That's right. That's right. I want you to get this. In 2 Timothy chapter 3. Follow me in the Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 3, we'll start at verse 5. All right. Having a form of godliness. You better begin at verse 1. We'll begin at verse 1. Do that. This know also. This know also. That in the last, in the days, last days, perilous, times, perilous shall come. times shall come. And we can bear witness that perilous times are here now. That's right. Scripture says it shall come and it's here. We're living in it. Oh, yeah. This was prophecy, and now we're living in the prophecy. That's right. All right? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Oh, they love themselves. They don't love God. Oh, yeah. They love themselves. What else? Covetous. Covetous. They desire someone else's anything and everything. Boasters. Boasters. They boast in themselves. They don't boast in God. Proud. Proud. Self-centered, self-righteous like the devil. Blasphemers. Blasphemers. They say anything against God with no conscience. Disobedient to parents. Hard head. Unthankful. They unappreciative. They don't care what you do. They just don't value it. Unholy. How in the world you going to be holy without the Holy Ghost? That's right. That's right. Unholy. Imagine Un a religion trying to be the people of God without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Ghost, without God within them. That's right. It is the Holy Ghost that aids us to be compliant to Scripture. That's right. The Holy Ghost is an aid. It's a helper. It's a helper. 
It helps us to be compliant with God's precepts, God's law, God's standards, God's statutes, God's thinking. That's right. Listen. Without natural affection. Without natural affection. Have you ever met a person without natural affection? Without it. Nothing fazed them. In other words, when it comes to the things of God, they don't love nothing. They just mean all the time. That's right. Wicked, evil, they don't even have natural affection. That, that man who don't have natural affection towards a woman, but yet have natural affection towards a man, something's wrong with him. Something's wrong with him. In fact, that's inordinate affection. Inordinate, that's right. Uh -huh. Truce breakers. Oh, they don't stick to their word. Amen. Uh -huh. False accusers. Oh, they jump on the bandwagon, don't even know what you're talking about. They just lie and make fake accusations. Incontinent. And what? Fierce. What else? Despisers of those that are good. What else? Traitors. What else? Heady. Heady. High-minded. High -minded. Lovers of pleasure. They love fun. More than lovers of God. Hold it. That's right. Lovers of pleasure. They love fun. That's right. That's right. And they don't love God. Amen. Many love church fun. That's right. <laughs> yeah, make good. Amen. Church fun. church fun. When I came up, it was church fun. Mm -hmm. I used Brother Gary term. Praise break. <laughs> That's right. What is praise break? When I came up in Falls Churches, we had joy night services every Saturday. We went from Falls Church to Falls Church to Falls Church to Falls Church, fellowshipping with each other, hypocriting. That's right. Praise break is when a preacher or some praise leader get up and just tell everybody, shout. Amen. When I count to three, just shout. Amen. You're not in the spirit. No. You're hypocriting. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. That's what the world do. That's right. We don't do that. The Bible said, do not act at their works. After their works. The Spirit of God or the Word of God supposed to govern, discipline, rule, guide the church. That's right. The body, the people. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Lovers of pleasures. Lovers of what? Pleasures. 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 More. More than more. 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 More than lovers. Of God. You know, confusion is a form of pleasure for some people. That's true. Lying and backbiting is a form of pleasure for some people because they get joy out of causing contention. That's right. Lovers of pleasure. Lovers of pleasure. Lovers of confusion. Lovers of lying. Yeah. Lovers of false accusation. That's right. Lovers of pretending. Lovers of faking. Yeah. That's right. Anything that give you satisfaction that break God's law, you love that. Love it. But when you love that more, more than lovers of God, then you love God. Amen. You know you got to be wicked, God knows. That's right. Because if you love it more than you love God, you have no desire to repent for that love. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. What is it? Having a form of godliness. Now, I want everybody to pay attention. Mm -hmm. I want to work on formality. Formality. That has been widely... Seem to be reality. Seemed. That's right. Many people can't tell the difference between formality, reality. reality. There's a form of godliness. That's right. And there's godliness. That's right. There's pretending. Yeah. And there's reality. Reality. Which category are you in? 
Hmm. Hmm. Are you a form of a saint? That's right. The, are you a form of child of God? That's right. One scripture says, if a man be called, called a, brother, a brother, you can call someone a brother. That don't mean he's a brother. That's right. Even in the street, you'll find different men and say, hey, what's up, brother? Called a brother, but that don't mean they're that. But now I've written unto you. What? In 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11. Yes. But now I've written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother. Wait a minute. Amen. If any man. If any man that is called a brother. Wait a minute. You better go back up to the beginning of it. 1 Corinthians 5. We'll start at verse 10. Listen, good. In fact, we'll start at verse Come 9. Come on, son. I wrote unto you in I an epistle. I wrote unto you in, in an epistle. Not to keep company with fornicators. Hold it. Amen. The Bible is laying church rules. That's right. Church orders. Orders. Church guidelines. That's right. Church instructions. Amen. Telling us what kind of people to be around and what kind of people not to be around. And he's talking to those in church. In church. Get this. I wrote unto you in an epistle. I wrote to you. Amen. In a letter. Not to company with fornicators. Why do the apostle didn't want you to keep company with fornicators? Because if you are inexperienced hmm. and keep hanging around one that is experienced, their experienced lifestyle may influence you to become experienced. That's right. And then when you become experienced, because you've been inexperienced so long, you may not can handle the new experience. That's right. Get me. I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to come. What is Paul preaching here? Separation. Yeah. Amen. Doesn't matter how long you've been friends, this is doctrine here. That's right. And this doctrine also is rule. rules. I wrote to you. I wrote Lord unto you. God, putting them in order. In order. In order. I wrote to you. In an epistle. In an epistle. Not to company with fornicators. Not to what? Co not to company with fornicators. No company with fornicators. He didn't say look down on them and say don't have company with them. Company. Are you listening? That's right. See how quiet it is? Very quiet. Very quiet. Very quiet. Well, Pastor Jennings, I knew this brother all my life. God said. I wrote unto you in an I epistle. I wrote to you in an epistle. Not to company. Not the company. With fornicators. But it's my blood brother. Not to company with fornicators. He's on security. Not to company with fornicators. He's a minister. Not to company with fornicators. He's a musician. Not to company with fornicators. She's a nurse. Not to company with fornicators. That's what the Holy Ghost brought here today. <laughs> Amen. The word of God says what? I wrote unto you in an I epistle. I wrote to you in the epistles. Not to company with not fornicators. Not to company with, with fornicators. fornicators. Yet not altogether. Not the, only fornicators. Yet not altogether. Yes. 
with the fornicators of this world but what? or with the covetous. Wait a minute. What else? Or with the covetous. Or with the covetous. Or extortioners. Or extortioners. Or with idolaters. Or with idolaters. For then must she needs go out of the world. You're going to end up backsliding. Yeah. You're going to go out there in the world. Amen. Because that atmosphere, you're going to fall in love with it, and you're going to love one more than the other. Yeah. One of those loves is going to pull you. Yeah. Are you listening? I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators. And what? Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world. And what? Or with the covetous, or extortioners, Extortion. or with idolaters. Yes. For then must ye needs go out of the world. And what? But now I have written unto you. Now I have written to you. Not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator. What are you saying, Paul? Amen. I wrote an epistle telling you how to abstain from certain ones in the world and their conduct. That's right. And if you find that conduct in church, that's what it means, brother. Brother. If that same worldly conduct, you see someone like that in church, same rule apply. That's right. Now I have written unto now, you. Now, what you mean? I'm writing again now. I That's wrote right. you before, and now I'm writing again. That's right. Mm. <laughs> Amen. I wrote you before and addressed them that's out there in the world, in the world. how to stay away from them. But I see that same spirit the Apostle Paul said came in the church. Came in the church. That's right. That's right. Same spirit. That's right. 